I am pleased to welcome Professor Roberto Verganti, a well-known researcher in design and management of innovation. Roberto, you are professor and researcher at Politecnico di Milano and you are teaching in the design and management program. You have written a book I mentioned in the MOOC, Design Driven Innovation, and you are about to publish another book entitled Innovation by Meaning. Mm -hmm. I understood that this perspective is quite different, if not in opposition with the design thinking movement. Could you explain in what extent and maybe what are the interesting ideas you find in uh, design thinking, however. Now I talk about design thinking has been popularized in the last 15 years, which is not, I mean, there are many acceptations of what design thinking could be. So, but in the last 15 years, especially in, in the US, uh, the idea of design thinking basically has been rooted around three principles, which is you start from the user, it's user centered. Uh, you generate a lot of ideas, brainstorming, creativity. And third, uh, iteration and prototyping. These are typically the three principles of design thinking. When you search for new meaning, uh, users are, in general, starting from outsiders, can be user, can be, uh, I don't know, scientists or creative people, whatever. If you start from the outside, getting ideas or insight from the outside is very difficult. And the reason why it's very difficult is because when you're not simply solving a technical problem, but you try to search for something more meaningful. I make an example. First chapter of the book, I mentioned a case of uh, Nest. Nest is a company doing thermostats, quite popular now in the US. They have been totally changing the meaning of what a thermostat is. Traditionally, the thermostat was something to control the temperature in a room. But they have been changing that, assuming that, you know, in reality, people don't know. Is it really meaningful to control the temperature? And you see this thermostat that looks almost like computers. And, but maybe people don't want to control the temperature. They just want to be in a cozy room and that's it. The traditional design thinking movement will say, okay, let's go, go in the house of people. Let's see how they program the thermostat, okay. And then you, you see there, okay, we can, there are different rooms. We can put more things there to program the temperature in different rooms and maybe there is a button here we can change the bottom make it more user friendly but the meaning will be the same and and you can start from from uh, what users uh, like you see that you know you can make the manual okay the manual of the of the thermostat can be on the thermostat and instead of being on paper that could be an improvement but you will never change uh, what people search for so uh, innovation and meaning start from the inside. The, the founders of this company actually are two entrepreneurs who came from Apple and they didn't do any user analysis. They start from a vision they had. Uh, uh, and you can imagine how much user analysis the, the uh, incumbents of the industry have been doing. And they have thousands of engineers and designers working on new thermostats and they've been doing all possible user analysis. But never came out the idea of why should we control for temperature. So, uh, even if you, the funny thing is that most of the ideas that are inside Nest, this new thermostat, were already around for decades. But the industry didn't really, I mean, they saw it, but they didn't, they didn't see the meaning there. So when you search for new meaning, you really need to reframe the way you interpret reality. You can even have the idea in front of you, but you will never see it. The second principle is that you don't need to have a lot of ideas when you want to create a new meaning. The most important thing is to start from yourself, but then to be critical. So the process that we have been focusing on is not a process in which we have teams to create thousands of ideas, but instead we start from what they have inside, but then we challenge them. And we actually more than we challenge them, we help them challenge each other and meet interpreters, as you mentioned before, that can challenge them. Uh, because you start from yourself, but then you have to reinterpret what you see and being critical in your process. Um, so it's, it's a process that is quite in contrast with what we have been seeing in design thinking in the last few years, where you know the classic motto is defer judgment, don't criticize the idea of the others. And, and this is a process in which actually the more criticism you get, the better it is. And actually, uh, I mean, criticism doesn't mean to be negative, criticism means to go deeper and, and it's a kind of developmental cr criticism uh, and it's very funny because on the one hand nowadays, that's my feeling but we have a lot of data about this, 
we don't live in a world that is where there is a lack of ideas. Nowadays, there is there are the technologies, there is the web, there are design schools. I mean, the ideas are everywhere, and they are very cheap to get. And and if you look at the studies of Richard Florida, thirty percent of the world population is belong to the creative class. So I mean, in a way, creativity in that perspective is the common ground of our century. You know, like a century ago, there was the working class, and now there is the creative class, which means we don't miss that. Uh, what is much more difficult is that in a world that is full of ideas, to understand where to go. And this critical capability is very rare. Coming back to your question, what do I like of design thinking? That, uh, I mean, I like design thinking because there are simply two different ways. There is Design thinking is perfect to solve problems. If there is a problem, you don't question if it's meaningful or not. You know that uh, this chair is too heavy and you want to make it lighter. Okay, how can we make it lighter? And there are thousands of ways you can make it lighter and you need a lot of creativity, ideas and so on. There is still one thing that, that in any case of design thinking is also useful when you want to search for new meaning and this is the idea of prototyping and iteration. This is, in this moment, is, is very, very important. And in whatever kind of innovation you do, you need to be fast and iterative. And uh, recently there was an article, an interaction, intersection of Harvard Business Review last September on design thinking. And there was an article by Tim Brown and, and uh, Roger Martin. Tim Brown is the CEO of, of IDEO. And I was surprised, or maybe uh, glad and surprised, that they didn't talk about the first two principles. They didn't talk about being user-centered, they didn't talk about being creative. They just focus on rapid prototyping. So maybe there is the understanding that some of this principle that we have been taking as a myth of starting from user and being creative, maybe it's not always true that are so necessary. At least there are more ways of doing innovation. Thank you very much, Professor Vaganti, for these clear explanations. I'm sure that the participants of our MOOC will be very interested in reading your next book, Innovation by Meaning. Thank you again. Thank you.